So here we are now with the plate. I'm gonna get this in an acid bath and etch it. So we'll see that on the other side. Okay, so obviously not the store label, but a few years back, uh, I mixed up a stain that I really enjoyed for saw handles. It looks mostly like this. I can tint it a little brown or a redder. Um, and so I'm gonna try that on a scrap piece of cherry to see how it's gonna look on this because these are usually out of beech or applewood or something else. So uh, let me see what it looks like on the cherry. I'm also gonna try some um, trans tint on black and red, because I'm thinking about possibly making that super, super dark, which might be a little unusual for what I normally do. So, let's give these a test. Now, since this is just a test, I'm just using a paper towel, I normally wouldn't do that. This is just a little bit of denatured alcohol. So you can see here the plate. Now this is going to be a negative, so the black will be silver and the silver will be black. But it's about 50-50 right now. So I can see if I had a natural tone handle, what it would look like versus a richer, darker one. So we're going to go that way for sure. But I might make it a little more red than black on there. So we'll sand it back and see what it looks like. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut the slot on uh, the handle here, and apparently it looks like I'm bleeding. Uh, so, guess from handling the saw blade here. Uh, but I'll show you the best way I have found for me uh, to cut a slot here. I've done it all sorts of ways, just with a hand saw through here. Uh, what's nice is to actually use the saw plate if it's sharp enough um, to cut there, but oftentimes if it has its full set, this gap will be too wide. Um, so what I do is I actually start the blade cut with a Japanese, saw, right, that I've just taken the blade out. This is an extra one I have that I use almost for this purpose. Um, you'll see I have a stock underneath here that actually raises this up, the blade up, to where it's at my mark right here across the center of my saw. And now I just have masking tape on the back to prevent any kind of finish uh, surface damage. 
and I'm going to slide this across the blade and slowly kerf the outside of this. And then all I have to do is the teeth are supported here on the block and I can slowly shift this blade out as my line gets deeper. That way I have no risk of drift. I've had that happen once and it really ruined my day uh, where I made a saw handle I loved and I drifted that kerf just a little bit and it made the blade twist. Uh, made it completely useless. So, uh, to start my cuts off, this is how I do them uh, since that event. So, all I'm going to do is just repeatedly drag this and score all the way around and um, get our slot going. Now, if you notice, I'm also using the cross cut side, not the rip side. This is just for kerfing this out. It'll cut smoother and with less rigidity until I'm ready and I can flip it. So I've drifted the blade over, switched it over to the rip side of this saw. And you can see that I have the slot cut almost all the way down the center. I have this last little bit to go, but I don't want to extend this too far. It can get kind of floppy. Um, so I cut the rest by hand, but I've got it almost all the way through everywhere else needs to go. So this slips right onto there. So I'll put in the vise, make the end of the cut. All right, so the plate's etching. While that's going on, I'm gonna do the finish work on the handle uh, and do the brass that I'm coming up. One of the benefits of cutting that slot before anything else, um, this is how I hold things when I do saw handles. That way I don't have to actually hold it, right? So I got a mop here. I will do the, the colorant and uh, we'll make sure that we get it the right color. Uh, deep, deep, deep red, black. Um, bring out some of these tones. We got coat number one on there. I'm gonna let that dry in, um, and then I might lightly scuff some or tint it a little redder, we'll see. <laughs> 